Today on Throwback Thursday, it's a 1957 hybrid like phone with an 80 inch knucklehead engine. Wahoo! Howdy y'all, Fuzzy Biker here. Welcome to Throwback Thursday. That's where we're going to feature a uh, vintage bike every Thursday. Check this one out. This is a uh, clone of a 1957 Hydroglide. But there's something different about it. It's not quite a clone. It's got an 80 inch knucklehead engine. Hydroglides did not have knuckleheads, but this one does. Check that out. Isn't that something? I've had the privilege of riding this motorcycle today. I've put about uh, 35 miles on it so far, and I'll put another 50 or so on the way home. Maybe I'll put another 100 on it on the way home. So, uh, 1957 Hydroglide front end and frame. The frame's been powder coated. Front end's totally rebuilt. Um, he stuffed a 80 cubic inch knucklehead engine in there. Knuckleheads are a precursor to the pan head before the shovel head, but the actual heads themselves are uh, cast iron, just like on my sports or my iron head. But a very interesting and very unique motor. I'm, I feel very privileged to run it. Um, it has a, a points ignition and it's got a Super E carburetor, SNS Super E carburetor. He's also got this Micron, I can't think of the name of it, but it's a metal oil filter that he uses. It's a, it's a dry sump bike. There's the oil sump right there. Uh, on the front and rear, he's put these GMA brakes, disc brakes. We think, he couldn't remember, but he thinks the disc are both uh, about 10 and a half inches. I don't know if you can see the rear one or not, but it's back there. Yeah, it's there it is, hiding. It's got an all ball starter, starts very well. And he's got a cycle electric generator with a built-in regulator right there. Those seem to work the best. These old, uh, on my Sportster alone, I went through three generators. The third one, I finally got a cycle electric. Although I did not get the kind that has the built-in regulator. My regulator's separate. The transmission in this is a, uh, it's a, the case, this is the transmission. The transmissions are separate from the engine on these older bikes. It's a RevTech case and he's sporting Andrew gears on the inside. It's a four speed manual. And it's quite a, it's an interesting thing to run. I, uh, I think it works very well, very smooth. Um, I don't think it's as clunky as my old Honda Shadow. I think it was actually a slight bit smoother. He's got a York clutch pack in there and the uh, engine to the transmission, the primary connection is a uh, BDL belt drive limited primary. Very good, very good. The tires are 516s, both front and rear, and I don't know what that translates into. And the bags he has in the back are neoprene. He did not want leather bags. So what's the tail behind this bike? Well, I'll step back a little bit. When this guy was a young teenager, his brother who was 12 years older, showed up with a box of motorcycle parts and threw them in the basement and took off. Within a couple of weeks, the owner of this bike had that box of motorcycle parts put together into a motorcycle and it turned out to be a knucklehead. That was his first bike. And that's how the addiction started. And he's done that several times now over the years. And that's led to this bike. He always wanted a Hydroglide, a 57. And of course he had the knuckle addiction because that was the first motor. So. He didn't want the pan head like the uh, Hydroglide had, he wanted this. So he built it. And in uh, the early 90s, he started putting it together. And uh, by the mid 90s, had it all done. And this has uh, been an ongoing work ever since. He's, you know, he's been riding it ever since. I think he's got, uh, on this particular motorcycle, looks like about 41 and three quarter miles, 41,750 miles. So that's the uh, story of how this happened. Uh, he does have several other motorcycles, so he does ride quite a bit. And uh, anyway, a little bit more about this particular bike. I don't know what it weighs. If I had to guess, it's got a you know it's got this iron motor. I would guess it's uh, probably 800 pounds. You know, all the parts are heavy on this kind of a bike. It uh, has very little ground clearance. If you look down there, it's a very wide motorcycle with these little wings and uh you know when he put these on here 
these little extensions. I thought, why did you do that? Well, now after riding it, I can see exactly why you did it. It's nice to have your legs out like that. So let's kind of take a tour of the bike here. We'll start with the front, 16 inch tire, chrome wheels, the brakes I already told you about, hydraulic brakes, the hydro leg front end, the big old headlight. He's got this short screen, which you wouldn't think do much, would do much, but it actually did very well today. Um, coming up the bars, uh, something I'd never noticed is this hand grip. Now that's a custom job. It's different from this one. <laughs> you know, I don't know how long it's been like that, but uh, anyway, this is the horn. This is the high-low switch down here. There's nothing over yonder. Starter button's right here. There is no kickstart on this bike. The run and kill switch, which doesn't work. It's not hooked up. Same with that, not hooked up. Uh, the throttle, he's got a two, two cable throttle. That's interesting, isn't it? The hydraulic disc, or the, the hydraulic reservoir for the disc, and two mirrors, of course. Big old tank. I don't know what his fuel capacity is. I'm gonna guess four or five gallons, maybe more. The speedometer on the bottom. Uh, I didn't think I would like that. Um, on this particular motorcycle, once you get some, once you get it to speed, it really doesn't pick up speed or let let off speed. It kind of holds its spot really well, so that wasn't really an issue at all. Two separate tanks, so you pop off both to fill it, I suppose. There, there's probably a tie-in in between, but it's probably a small hose. He had the flames pinstriped on years ago. Like I said, he's got the Super E carb, the uh, SNS Super E carb. He's got the uh, external oil filter here with the, uh, I think it's a Micron or something like that, but you wash it out, you don't replace it. The oil pump for the engine, it's a wet sump engine. Uh, he and I were working on bikes one night and uh, the starter stuck wide open. And so we had to wrench the battery off to get it to shut off. And you know, that was on my Harley. And a few months later we were working on this Harley and the same thing happened. So he got a magnet and a wrench in case it happens, he can uh, wrench off the battery if he's out in the road or something like that, get to it quickly. Uh, here's the horn back here, the solenoid for the starter, all that neat stuff. Like I said, the neoprene bags. A little luggage rack on the back, pogo seat, which actually is very, I thought it worked very well. Um, I, I already talked about the extra wide, and then of course the crash bar. You know, you wouldn't think crash bars like that would work so well, but I have another friend of mine, he uh, has front and rear crash bars, and he actually dropped his motorcycle several times in one day, and the crash bars saved the bike. Uh, anyway, let's see, got these this very interesting pipe, you know, <laughs> this is a custom job, guys. He, uh, this is a rider. This is a mechanic's motorcycle. You know, his style is mechanic. He's also working on another knucklehead at this time, and he's also got an Evo FXR that he's working on at this time. So a beautiful motorcycle, beautiful motorcycle. So I'm lucky enough to get to go ride this thing. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to hop on that hot rod and go for a spin. Wahoo! Okay, let's see if I can get this thing to start. Ignition on. Wahoo! Started right up. It's got a rigid rear suspension and the seat is on a pogo stick. So that's your whole rear suspension. The front suspension, it's a hydroglide, so it, it's a uh, forks. But uh, I think they're very limited. I would be amazed if there's more than a couple inches of travel. When you are riding down the highway, you, you learn to look for bumps. Within the first couple miles, I learned to identify any kind of obstacle at all. That'll... The front, when you hit certain bumps, will shudder on you. Now the front end is in good shape. I checked that before we left. I think that's just maybe a characteristic of this older motorcycle. It's a really interesting thing to be, you know, you hit a bump and your whole seat comes up in the air with you. It has uh, some unique characteristics um, regarding the rear suspension. If you're doing something like this and you hit a bump, the tire will uh, skip, but it feels very different than a normal motorcycle. And a normal motorcycle will still skip, but uh, you know the suspension does some work to help ease you through it. Overall, the ride quality was better than I'd imagined. I uh, had never ridden a rigid before, and I was quite surprised at how she did very, you know, she did very well. Now, what's interesting about this? The owner of this bike and I, we ride a lot together and uh, we do gravel roads. 
you know, those are quite a bit bumpier than this. And uh, he, he does very well on that. So I know this bike can do these things. It's just a skill that it has to be learned. And uh, I don't think you can learn that in an afternoon of riding on a bike like this. I think that's something you need to spend some time on. As far as handling like in a garage, I use his shop periodically. And uh, I push this bike around quite a bit. It's got an incredibly low center of gravity. I mean, the lowest center of gravity I've ever had, had, had the lowest center of gravity I've ever pushed around on a motorcycle. I referred to my motor, I referred to my Harley the other day as having a center of gravity of a skateboard, you know, so low. And this one makes my Harley look tall. <laughs> motor, now let's talk about the engine. 80 inch knucklehead with all the torque in the world. I mean, it, it, my, my Harley, I'm going to keep comparing it to that, has all the torque in the world. This has more. <laughs> I mean, it just seems to have all kinds of power, you know. It, it does not want, I mean, look, look at that. Just a, you know, just not even a hint of struggle, you know. Uh, going back to highway real quick, he asked me to drive between 55 and 60, and I did that. Uh, I was going down a big hill and uh, suddenly the bike kind of smoothed out and I looked down I was going about 64 miles an hour and uh, you know there might be a sweet spot that uh, he just doesn't like to run the bike that hard at and if that's the case I would find some way to take advantage of that. Uh, as far as handling goes on these little roads here like this the bike you know once you get the hang of this thing it's it's superb actually. Let's see how it turns here. I don't expect this to turn very well. It's a, it's a long wheelbase, very heavy motorcycle with great big tires. But not too bad, huh? It's a very different thing to drive than anything I've ever driven before. It, uh, it's kind of a, it makes you want an older motorcycle like this. One of the first Harleys I ever saw running was a 45 flathead one of these wall of death things and I've always wanted one of those now after driving this I really want one of those that is the whole of Spring Brook an absolutely beautiful lake the CCC or a shelter over yonder neat little bridge spillway down there let's keep on rolling so let's talk about the brakes uh, first off the brake pedal is in a very bad spot for me if you look down there, I have to actually pick my foot up to get to it. I suppose once you're used to that, it's not an issue, but uh, how do they work? The brakes work great, kind of like stopping a battleship. They'll stop, it just takes a while. These early knuckleheads were not known for their horsepower, but they were known for their torque. It'd be interesting to know what the torque number is on this bike and exactly what RPMs it starts to really kick in. I'm going to guess it's coming in right over, right over idle, right at idle actually because it certainly has no, uh, it does not want for torque. Well, thank you all for coming to Throwback Thursday, the vintage bike corner of the channel. We'll try to do this every Thursday. Check back in next Thursday and see what we got. Life is short, you all get out there and ride. Wahoo! Hey, Fuzzy Biker here today. Lucky enough to put about 150 miles on that hot rod 1957 Hydroglide Harley Davidson with a knucklehead engine can you see that life is good it took me about 100 miles just to get used to it what a deal wahoo